That's the third message on the worker that God uses. The worker that God uses is one who understands the Word of God. If you look at today's passage from the, the handout, um, all Scripture is God-breathed, useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training, and righteousness. Right? Amen? Amen. But depending on how you understand the Gospel, as we talked about last week, um, the Word can be used <laughs> to teach, to build up in Christ. It uh, can be used to, in love, correct in Christ. In love, raise up in righteousness in Christ. Or, it can be used as a weapon to... Um, not maybe not on purpose, but to leave scars um, in legalism, in self-centeredness, not Christ-centeredness. Because okay, so we have to understand this very carefully. Okay. Um, so to understand that, it's not just Bible study. It's not just knowing the word. The worker that God uses is not someone who knows a lot about the word. Um, it's the person who knows the purpose of the word and its kind of application. Okay. So for now, the word of God is living and active. Okay. And it's used, for, as for us as workers, we need to have, have this kind of uh, frame and mindset is that it's used for healing. The word of God is used for healing. Healing from what? Genesis 3, 6, and 11. Okay. This, is the, this is what's happening today. People need healing. You and I need healing. Namely, from this. This is where it all began. We need healing from the Genesis 3 problem. What is the, at the core of that? It's me. And you heard this message before, but this is what we need healing from. This is how, why we need the Word of God. It brings us back in the right direction. Um, this was material wealth and success. As Christians, not knowing the Word properly, not knowing the Gospel properly, we live this way too. You know what I'm saying? That was This is what our prayer topics were. God, give me success. Give me physical comforts and things that I need. For what? We say it's for God's glory, but we're all we're, we're so stuck here. This is where we need to come out of. This is where we need healing from. Amen? Amen. And the reason why it's so hard to see that is because behind this... Satan. Okay, the churches of the world today don't want you to talk about him. If there's a thief in this in this church, uh, if you give an announcement, there's a thief stealing purses in this church. The only person that's going to not like that is the thief. Oh, please don't give me that announcement, please. I'm trying to steal purses here. Don't tell people I'm stealing purses. Don't tell them of me. Are you following me? But if you make an announcement or you tell people, hey, don't talk about the thief. Come on, man. There's no thief. Who's happiest? The thief. This is the problem, guys. And this is the problem in our personal lives, too. We don't see or acknowledge the existence of the enemy. If you go throughout your day and you're not spiritually aware, and the reason why that's so difficult to catch is because his strategy is these things, too, but his main strategy is you. You're the standard, you're thinking, your way, you, what you think is right, what you think is wrong. You don't have time to take a step back. That's what healing is. Take a step back from yourself, from what you think, from what you feel, from what you see, from what you perceive that you need, and stand before God's Word. That's what we need. That's what healing is. Okay? The worker that God uses is the one who can do that. That's, that's, that's how simple it is. Stand before God's word, okay? But we're so used to standing before ourselves. That's Satan's strategy. You know, Pastor, you mentioned in the message, connecting everything to prayer. If you don't connect everything to prayer, 100% you're going to be stuck on your own. <clears throat> when you're tired, 
uh, where when you face a problem or someone that agitates you, if you don't connect it to prayer, you're going to be left on your own. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh man, why is that person? Ah, and then you, it just gets to you, right? But the moment you connect it to prayer, like, oh God, why is that person? It's such a simple thing, but it changes your spiritual state. Guys, when I'm tired and hungry, you don't want to be around me. The kids that I love to death can get on my nerves. If I don't connect it to prayer, it's gonna, I'm going to face my limitation, and it's going to be very real. My limitation will be very real. But when I connect it to prayer and say, God, I'm so tired. These kids are driving me crazy. It changes your spiritual state. Just that moment of acknowledging and standing before God, connecting it to prayer. Okay. Healing, the key to healing, and the way that Jesus himself he, you know, fought Satan was through the Word in Matthew chapter 4. That's, it's mentioned here. This is the, 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 the main uh, content of this, today's, today's training. Jesus is tempted by Satan three times, and three times Jesus says it is written before he uh, fights Satan. He uses the Word. He could just say, get away, because he's God. But he says, it is written. Satan says, and uses the word too. Satan uses the word too. He says, hey, in the word it says, if you jump down from here, then angels will catch you. And then Jesus could say, get out. I'm God. But he doesn't. He says, it is written that you shall not test the Lord your God. He, he uses the word. Okay? So that's why it's so important. The word okay, that's centered on the gospel. And the word, not just in a vague way, but holding on to the evidence, as you heard today in Pastor Brett's message. You hold on to the evidence. You hold on to the evidence boldly from last week's message with assurance. You, you know, boldly with assurance. Holding on to the evidence that Jesus is the Christ. That's what Paul did. I don't, you know, lately as I'm meditating on how, why God used Paul, I think he's to show us that God could use anyone. Paul was boldly arguing, persuasively, wherever he went, proclaiming that Jesus is the Christ. Right? But Paul is the last person that should be able to do that. He is the one who were, were persecuting Christians. He was persecuting them, killing them even. But he's boldly... What does that mean? That means he was not preaching of himself. He was preaching with evidence. He was preaching the gospel. Boldly. Because it's not about him. You know, a lot of us, we think, oh, how can I evangelize? Oh, I'm so this, I'm so that. Oh, you know, I'm not ready, or I need healing, or I, you know, what about, you know, we have all these misunderstandings. Paul, out of everyone, should never be able to evangelize. If that's the case. Are you following me? Yes. His past is the worst past. But he boldly stands, unshaken. Why? That's how sure and confident he was in the gospel. Are you following me? This is a man who killed Christians. If his conscience was weighing on him, if he did not seriously hold on to the evidence, there is no way he could be the man that he was. That's why the Christians in the beginning were like, oh my God, oh my God, you said Paul from, Saul from Tarsus is a believer? And not only a believer, he's an apostle? No way. So all the Christians in Jerusalem were like, hey, I, I, don't bring him around here, man. You know, because <laughs> he was a persecutor. But God raised him up because it's not about the individual. It's not about our past. He doesn't care. It's not about your weakness or not, your sickness. Even Paul had a disease. And God, he said, God, heal it. And he said, no, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. Amen? Amen. So hold on to the evidence boldly, okay? Hold on. The worker that God uses is the one that holds on to the word. Okay? The Old Testament, very simple. Okay? We'll just break it down. The principle of creation. Hold on to the evidence. That man is created in his image. 
unique in God's image. There's so many answers here. Created to be with Him. The Bible, the Word is talking about the perfect creation of God and the problem, the fall. Genesis chapter 3. Right after the fall, right after the fall, this is in the first three chapters of the Old Testament lays out the entire Old Testament. Right after the fall is the promise of the Messiah, of the Christ. Genesis 3, 15. That's the Old Testament. The New Testament. What is the New Testament? It's the fulfillment of this promise. That Jesus is a Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? His death and His resurrection. John 19.30 That He has finished it. He solved mankind's problem. Thirdly, the worker that God uses is the, the worker that knows the gospel and then not only knows the gospel but applies it. But applies it. It applies it to me. The me that God has made. Yet to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Amen? Amen. Also applying it to me, but the things that God has given to me. What has God given to you? First three Corinthians three sixteen. He has given you Himself, the Holy Spirit. That's what He's given you. Everything. Why is God with you? Because God has prepared a field for you. Acts one eight. The field that God has prepared. What we need to do is application. The core message was all about this. Okay, let me try to break it down for you, okay, to help you out a little more. What is the application of the gospel? It's to change me, change my field and change my future. How do I change myself? How do I change it from being me-centered to God-centered? That's it. Christ God's kingdom and the filling of the Holy Spirit. So simple. Hold on to the gospel, the reason why God's given me the gospel, and God's method of the filling of the Holy Spirit. Just do those three things. And then what's naturally going to take place is God's heavenly mandate. You'll start to see the reason, the point. When you start receiving strength, you'll see, oh, this is why I have to live. And not only this is why I have to live, this is how I'm going to live. By the Spirit of God. And instead of burden, or instead of like, oh, I can't do it, you'll feel, it's strange, you know? You'll have that confidence like, yeah, God is going to use me. You know? He's starting to, and He's going to, and He's going to continue to. Like you see, you don't know the exact picture, but you have that confidence. That mandate, that heavenly mandate, God's calling and commission. This is everything, okay? This is the mystery to change yourself. And then, bringing it to the field. So how do you start? If you know this, you know that God has a heavenly mandate for you. How do you start? Where do you start? You start with what's right for If you have 
Let's start with something small. If you go home and your, your desk is messy, clean your desk. It seems like nothing, right? If you go home and in the morning it's hard for you to pray, then wake up a little earlier. If you go, for me, I don't know. If there's like stuff all over my desk, I can't focus. So what do I, what's the rightful thing to do? Clean up. Clean up the desk. <laughs> so you can focus. I mean, it's kind of, I'm, I'm saying this jokingly, but that's how simple the start should be. Um, last week if, at EM, if your worship is, um, we're, we're on the book of Hebrews, what's a, what's a rightful thing that you should do throughout the week? Just read the book of Hebrews. If you start there, it's amazing. You know, every book that we've been going through, if you read through that book, there is treasures in there, guys. Treasures. There's a tiny schedule of God. This is a simple thing. What's rightful is if you're going to do evangelism, if that's your heavenly mandate, to evangelize to a group of people, or you're praying for your friend, or praying for this or that, the very first thing, how you start to change that field is you do what's with, what start with what's rightful. Generally, if you're if you're if you're being filled by the Spirit and you understand, you'll start with seeing trying to see things from their perspective. It's not always easy. I'm I'm very embarrassed to say that when I first went into colleges to evangelize, I was not doing the rightful thing. I didn't see things from their perspective. I just went in to share the gospel that I wanted to share with them, and that was it. Hey, hey, excuse me, we have five minutes? Yeah, all right. Uh, let me, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're, they're, okay, let's sit down there. And you know, God was created the fish in the water, and the fish in the water, and the fish Would you like to see Jesus Christ? Okay, and then, not that God doesn't work through that or not, but I had no, I did not do the rightful thing. I didn't understand what they were going through. Are you following me? I didn't understand things from their perspective. I didn't understand how difficult it was for them. I didn't really... If I put it like bluntly, I didn't really know that field. If you're gonna say, try to say something, you need to know them. You have to be close to them. Like you have to care for them. I believe that's the rightful thing that we need to start with. Okay? Start with something small. And if you start with that, you'll see what's needed and then what's absolute. How do you start? With uh, that's how you start. Though, so how should you do it? How should you do it? With one heart, put your whole heart into it. Into it, continuation. Don't do it half-heartedly, but with one heart, with your whole heart. And what, with what content should you do it with? Only Christ. Nothing else. That's the content. And the answer of uniqueness and recreation will follow. Okay. How are you going to change the future? Your future. Tomorrow. Next year. Five years. Yo, ten years from now, Pastor Yu is not going to be able to run like he's running now. In order to be continuing in the line of the covenant for world evangelism, the what's the way to change the future? Is this all this gospel make it 24? Every part of your mind and your heart and your thoughts. We're not perfect, but every everything connect to prayer. It's going to change your future, and then God's power will be connected to eternity. With the gospel, change your imprints, roots, and nature. Amen? Amen? All this starts with personal worship. As Pastor you ended today, schedule prayer. Start it with scheduled prayer, continuous prayer, concentrated prayer. All right? Uh... Spiritual summit is basically it's to change through when you wake up in the morning, check your spiritual state and connect it to prayer. 
Um, there's a way that uh, EMS has put this together. Uh, 138, Christ, the Kingdom of God, the filling of the Holy Spirit, and then after that, H.M. Rudy. Because sometimes I get it work like backwards. backwards. H.M. Rudy. Heavenly Mandate. Right? H. M. Heavenly Mandate is H.M. Oh, I'm sorry. Heavenly Mandate. <laughs> What, rightful, okay? You get, you know what I'm saying? Right. Only one, one, one heart, whole one, heart, one only. Oops, sorry. <laughs> one only. One and only. Right. One only. Twenty-four. Inference. H. M. Rudy. <laughs> this might help you to remember. Okay. Heavenly mandate, start with what's rightful, how, with one heart, with what? Only Christ, 24 hours a day, okay? Uh, next month, we're gonna start evangelism camp, okay? So, um, start making a list of people. Pray for people, and this camp will go out to actually meet them and share the gospel with them. Okay, let's pray. <laughs>